Based sa survey ng Statista, out of 3.1 billion smartphone users, 2.87 billion or 95% dito uses Android over iOS. Mainly dahil mas mura ang Android devices compared sa Apple devices. And yung ibang users, especially yung advanced users, prefer Android over iOS dahil mas user-friendly to and isa pang reason is mas madali itong itwick. And one of the advanced features na to ng Android is uh, the developer's options. Ano nga ba yung developer's option and ano yung ups and downs nitong feature na to? Bago ang lahat, kung bago pa lang dito, makakatulong ng malaki ang pag-click mo ng subscribe button and notification bell para updated ka sa mga future tech videos natin. So kung na-click mo na yan, then let's go! Ang developer's option is isang feature na naka-equip sa lahat ng Android devices, either low-end device man yan or sa pinakamahal na Android phones na mabibili mo. Included sa options na to yung mga features na pwede mong enable or is able to enhance the performance of your device. Or kung hindi naman, is to add features sa device mo. The problem here is nakatago tong option na to, especially to sa mga normal users para ma-avoid yung harm dahil sa mali paggamit ng ibang features nito. Dahil guys, hindi lahat ng options dito is maganda ang effect or applicable sa new users. So pag-uusapan natin yung mga features na makakatulong or makapag-enhance ng performance ng device natin at yung iba din na hindi natin dapat galawin para makatiling safe yung device natin. But first, paano nga ba natin yun may enable yung developer's option sa device natin? Well, the location of this option varies depende sa device mo. But generally, all you have to do is find your phone's build number Usually, makikita yan sa about section ng phone mo. Yung iba naman is sa software info. Just look for it sa settings and nandyan lang yan. Next, pag nakita mo na yung build number, kailangan mo lang gawin is i-click yan 7 times in a row hanggang sa makita mo yung message na developer's option enabled. Then, punta ka sa settings and hanapin mo na yung developer's options. Once you are inside, makikita mo na yung iba't ibang settings. Kasama na dyan yung force allow apps on external card. Itong option na to is useful kung ang uh, Android phone mo is hindi allowed mag-install ka ng apps sa SD card. Kaya laging puno yung internal drive mo and di ka makapag-install ng Genshin Impact na napakalaking file. Kapag in-enable mo itong option na to, i-allow ni Android na i-transfer mo yung apps galing sa internal papunta sa SD card. Just remember na kapag na-transfer mo na yung apps sa SD card mo and hindi siya nag-function, just move it back sa internal storage dahil may mga apps na hindi gumagana unless sa internal storage siya naka-install. Next feature inside the developer's mode na useful is itong force any app to work in split screen mode. Yung split screen mode is inintroduce sa Android Nougat and very handy itong option na to. Uh, for example, nakapag-YouTube ka while scrolling sa FB mo. Pero hindi lahat ng app is allowed or may split screen function. Pero pag in-enable mo itong force any app to work in split screen mode, lahat ng apps sa Android device mo is pwede mo yung split screen. Mapa-app man yan or games. Just remember na hindi lahat ng app is maganda tignan sa split screen mode. Dahil yung ibang apps niyan is hindi naman talaga optimized for that. Next cool option is the allow Mac location. Want to download app na hindi ma-download sa region mo? Or gusto mo lang lokoy yung friend mo para isipin niya na nasa Europe ka ngayon pag nag-appear yung location mo sa messenger. If you enable allow Mac location option, it allows you to spoof your GPS location by using GPS spoofing apps. You can download some of these for free. Kung naglaro ka ng Pokemon Go, sigurado ko nakagamit ka na ito para, huli mo yung, para mahuli mo yung mga Pokemon na makikita lang sa gitna ng dagat or sa gilid ng bundok. Just open your uh, GPS spoofing app, click on the location na gusto mo, and boom! I-recognize na ng phone mo na nandun ka sa place niya. You can now watch movies or download apps na exclusive account here. Next one is maybe the most important option in developer's option. And I think the option na dapat aware yung lahat ng Android users. The USB debugging. Allowing this option will allow your device to communicate over the USB port on your PC via the ADB or the Android debug bridge. Yung ADB is a software sa computer natin na ginagamit para makagawa ng advanced operations sa Android device natin gaya nung pag-stream ng screen mo papunta doon sa computer mo. So marami pang ibang function kapag naka-enable yung USB debugging natin gaya ng 
pwede mo i-rig yung phone mo or uh, unlock mo yung bootloader or kung hindi mo na ma-open or hindi mo na mabuksan, hindi mo na ma-access yung phone mo mas madali mo siya ma-repair kapag naka-enable yung USB debugging sa device mo But here's the downside, security Pag laging naka-enable yung uh, USB debugging ng phone mo pwedeng ma-access ng ibang tao yung files mo if you're charging your phone through a desktop or a laptop for example kahit nakalock pa yung screen ng phone mo If USB debugging is enabled, they can access your phone's files without a problem. Or for example, mawala mo or manakaw yung phone mo, kahit may password pa yan, they can easily access your files just by plugging in your device on a computer. So, enable it at your own risk. Let's move on to mga features na may performance boost sa device natin. These are the animation scales. There's the window animation scale, Transition Animation Scale and the Animator Duration Scale. Windows Animation Scales control the speed ng pag-open and close ng Windows app. Yung Transition Animation naman controls the speed ng pag-switch between apps and yung Animator Duration handles those smaller apps animation kagaya ng uh, pag-tap sa menus and buttons. By default, lahat ng values ito is nakaset sa times 1. And if you lower these values to 0.5 times, or uh, if you want, you can disable it completely. So you'll feel na magiging snappy yung device mo, especially sa mga low-end devices. Dahil mawawala yung mga animations niya. If you disable it, then it costs bugs sa ibang apps mo. Then just set it to 0.5 times, and you will still have that snappy feeling. Next one is the Force times 4 MSAA option. MSAA means multi-sampling anti-aliasing. Kung naglalaro ka ng mga PC games, madalas kung makita yung anti-aliasing na yan doon sa mga options. Affected dyan yung mga edges ng mga characters and yung mga ibang elements sa games na nilalaro mo. And the higher it gets, the smoother the graphics will be. So, mapapansin mo na mag e enhance yung graphics ng games na nilalaro mo sa Android mo. Pag naka-enable tong option na to. Next is the Force GPU Rendering. In Android devices, yung rendering is ginagawa ng both CPU and the GPU. By default, yung mga 3D interfaces is nire-render ng GPU. And yung iba naman, gaya ng mga 2D interface, is ginagawa naman ng CPU. But of course, GPU is more effective in rendering than CPU. And usually, para makapag-render yung CPU ng mga interface na yan, kumakain siya ng maraming resources. Kaya madalas tayo naka-experience ng lags and hang sa mga phones natin pag intensive task na like games and force GPU rendering will force the GPU to do all the rendering na ginagawa ng CPU so the CPU will free up these resources kaya mababawasan yung lags and makaramdam ka ng malaking improvement pagdating sa performance however, may downside din itong uh, force times for MSAA and force GPU rendering ito is yung overheating sa device ko especially kung hindi maganda yung heat processing ng phones mo or maliliit yung mga coils niyan sa loob. So, after enabling these options and napansin mo na sobrang nagiinit yung phone mo, uh, I'll suggest that you disable it immediately to avoid trying your device. Another thing to consider is the power consumption. As this option will give your phone's GPU more hard work, it will take more power than it normally does. And if enabling these options will result in stability to your device, then uh, huwag ka magdalawang isip mo. The last option na i-discuss natin for this video is the discard activity or dun sa iba is a uh, don't keep activities option. This one involves the RAM. As we all know, yung purpose ng RAM is to remember your previous activities including yung mga apps. So next time we launch it, mas mabilis na siya compared dun sa initial launch mo. And uh, another is yung multitasking. So if you open multiple uh, app at once, it will chew up your RAM capacity and If your RAM reaches its limit, then it will result in performance loss. If you enable discard activities option or yung uh, don't keep activities option, any app na mawala dun sa main screen mo will be automatically closed. Meaning you will have smoother experience dahil walang ibang apps na tumatapos sa background mo. So if you are playing games on your phone, you will feel boost in performance. But be careful when enabling this option, especially pag naglalaro ka ng mga games. Dahil if you're in the middle of the game, you accidentally press the home button, then you'll have to relaunch your game from the start. So, cross finger and pagdasal mo na makareconnect agad, or else, eh, may black star ka na naman. 
So, marami pang options doon sa loob ng developer's option. And kung uh, curious ka, then you can explore and experiment on these options. Just remember that some of the options here are uh, meant to be used by the developer only. That's why this developer's option is not enabled by default. So, once again, do it at your own risk. And if you ever break your phone or let's say it goes into a boot loop dahil just sa mga options na yan, then you can always format your phone and try again. Well, that's all for this video and if you learned something, please click that like button, subscribe and see you on my next video guys. Thanks for watching.